talk about the use of weight bearing CT and its application for the uh, curved beam uh, technology. Um, I've been doing uh, prophecy technology for uh, total ankle arthroplasty now for uh, a number of years since the prophecy um, platform was launched. I basically converted all of my total ankle business over to using patient navigation. And this is uh, exciting for us because we needed to convert over to weight bearing CT for multiple reasons, and we'll talk about that. So what is my practice? I'm at a university setting, tertiary care setting. Um, I'm the only orthopedic foot and ankle specialist in the state up until just recently. And we have uh, 30 plus total ankles done a year at our institution by me. And since 2012, we've been using the Prophecy system. Uh, primarily, I use the M-Bone as my preference. And we have um, been using the Prophecy navigation in 99% of our cases. The curve beam was first installed at WVU in March of 2018. We had the original PEDCAT, but when we purchased our machine, we had purchased the lineup. So we were waiting for the lineup to be available. We still initiated the PEDCAT, and the lineup was installed in December 2018, and with the intention immediately to be able to do total ankle arthroplasty at that time. Since we've had the installation of weight bearing CT, we have been doing, we've done 375 scans in uh, the 18 months, so that's an average of five and a half a week, and that has turned into a very nice profit stream for our radiology department. The weight bearing CT for prophecy, many people might ask why. Well, point of care seems like an obvious one. Uh, the real weight bearing position perhaps may give you the better alignment choices uh, to make your decisions, and concomitant deformities can be assessed and then better detail. Um, put question marks there because I'm going to discuss that again in a moment. So our experience is the first prophecy scans performed in the lineup in February 2019 uh, allowed us to do seven total ankles, uh, in-bone prophecy total ankles using the prophecy prepared on the lineup and we have passed uh, actually as of today seven more scans that are pending my OR schedule. So we had to go through a little bit of regulatory concerns because the original uh, prophecy was not designed for this technology so we had to confirm with the FDA that this would be something we could investigate and we had to confirm with Curvebeam that it could deliver to us the technology that we wanted to be able to see the details and we have already published on this before with, uh, with some of my graduates and from my fellowship we did a multi-center study looking at the PSI and how uh, accurate it is in alignment of your total ankles and we found that we could with the routine prophecy which is done in a supine CT we could get an overall alignment in 79.9 percent to be within three degrees now this surpassed the original studies by Haddad that showed five degrees was acceptable and so we were happy with these results and the outliers the nine outliers that were outside of three degrees were all varus ankles greater than um, than neutral. So this is important information. You see what our results will be with the weight bearing CT scan and you'll see that our average from the projected prophecy alignment came out to be within two degrees on the on all planes and the average uh, this is succeed, exceeding our average that you saw with the previously published results in FAI. So this is better than the weight bearing, the non-weight bearing CT scans, at least in this small number. And I'll also note out that the largest deformity that we have not achieved has been 3.3 degrees. So still within the original research's best results. So here's a couple of case examples that'll highlight this. This first case, 62 year old male, com uh, complete delamination of the Taylor Dome, regional Taylor AVN, Arthritic changes seen on MRI on the tibial side as well, although it doesn't look quite as bad on the x-ray. Bracing for two years, and he finally is to the point where he's not getting enough relief to continue working. He's a still a working guy. So our prophecy case predicted, and what we came up with was a C, was an alignment within 0.9 degrees of prediction and negative 0.9 degrees in prediction on the lateral. So pretty much you could say spot on. And here's what the weight bearing CT scan uh, of a case. In the second case, this one is a 61-year-old male, motor vehicle crash in, in his childhood, which required ORF, 
And here's where we're going to point out the varus, which is 28.3 degrees preoperatively. So not only do we do pretty severe deformities with our prophecy systems, but this is going to be in varus, which has been already one of the predictors to be outside of the range of uh, acceptable. The subtalar joint was not symptomatic, you might see on the x-ray, but the bracing had been done for three years and it was waning in its effect. But what we were able to achieve here is that we got to three degrees of alignment on the AP and negative 0.5 degrees from the prediction on the lateral. But notice here, we have varus as our starting 28.3 degrees, which would have predicted that you would get over three degrees, and we were able to get within three degrees, and so this is, a, this is an extremely good result. So to do this with better alignment and having the engineers have the capability of do the pre-surgical planning with better alignment, I think was made a big difference here. So to go back to my original points, what do we have? We have point of care. So this is convenience for the patient. Everybody kind of recognizes that. But I will tell you that my more important point of point of care is control for the surgeon. So I have control over this. I can tell when I want the scan done. I can also assure the quality of the scan is done correctly and the protocol is followed correctly. So this now doesn't allow my patient to go to an outside facility. No matter how well the protocol is written, we all have had the experience where they go somewhere else, get their scans and are not adequate, and they won't pass prophecies uh, requirements. So this to me was extremely important. The real weight-bearing position was something I always felt was important. If you've ever watched how prophecy is done, you basically take the CT and you then will segment out each bone and put them simulated into a weight-bearing position. This is something that is pretty reliable, but it's not true weight-bearing. And so there are some dynamic changes and some compensatory changes and coupling problems that happen as the joints get into true weight-bearing scenario. And so I always felt like we were leaving behind potential uh, some deformities that we did not understand when we saw the prophecy scans. Um, I got to admit, after doing, you know, 400 total ankles and the majority of those under prophecy, that this has not been a huge problem. But I always felt there was a little bit of room for improvement for real-world positioning, and this is what I'm seeing now. My latest scan I just got approved that I'll be doing surgery on actually aligned up with the re results looking pretty good, but the engineers made comments that there still is a significant amount of hind foot valgus. I knew this from my preoperative x-rays, but I didn't see, I thought it would be minimal enough I wouldn't have to compensate for doing a hind foot alignment, but after I saw it plotted out on prophecy in the weight bearing scan, I now know I will have to do a hind foot alignment with that total ankle, and it changed my direction that I was going to do with that case. So concomitant deformities are what we're talking about here, and that's something very important. So without the weight bearing, you were relying on extra information you got from x-ray or from simulated weight bearing from the CT scan. And so this really highlights that, makes you very certain that your final position with your, with your implant will be most optimized and, and protected. And better detail. So we hear often from people that they say, uh, I don't really understand the detail in what I'm looking at on the CT. And I'll agree, when you're first looking at it, it's kind of hard, but I'll also tell you that the curved beam uh, cube view technology is extremely important. So the workstations that come with the scanner allow me to really look and find detail, three dimensions. The software is very, very user friendly. Um, it's also very important to see the fine detail, and I see it far better than I see working on PAX machines. So that is my endorsement for using the workstations, which we have a dedicated foot and ankle radiologist now with this, we moved one of these workstations to her reading station um, and it's helping us with a lot of research and such. But the detail really is coming with the curve beam cube view. So I really would encourage you if you're interested in a weight bearing CT scanner to talk to them also about the viewing station because I think it really makes a big difference um, in what I've been able to apply. So I think you're getting better detail as well. Uh,